to adjust with the situation. And most of our work needs to be done remotely. Uh, and well, we seize the opportunity to invite more people and we uh, enjoy sharing our knowledge and expertise and uh, guidance to our users uh, through online training, uh, wherever they are, uh, whether you are at home or remotely in your country, uh, or you are a new user who is trying to explore the new venues to use HPC for your science. <clears throat> um, so, uh, I'm Sabah Fekhi, the scientist team lead at Supercomputing Core Lab. And today I will start by giving a brief overview of KSL and then move on to some of the initial part of the training and leave the floor to my team. So what is KSL and what is our mission? So we, we, we are the computing lab, one of the CAUS, the, uh, the King of the University of Science and Technology. And our mission is to put state-of-the-art facility, mainly computational facility, training and services to students and faculty and researchers at CAUS, but also uh, we try to serve the needs of the kingdom. Uh, and uh, if, if as part of our uh, outreach program within the kingdom is, is this kind of training where we have 90%, I think, of our digital uh, trainees from the kingdom, and we appreciate that. Um, and our goal is ultimately to become a world-class reference in supercomputing, not only in the kingdom, but hopefully worldwide. So what do we do? Uh, we, we, we provide the infrastructure, as you all know, which is the we have mainly two systems, the Shaheen supercomputer, the world-class leadership system, but we also have an annex systems like Nestor and uh, IBEX who provide uh, infrastructure and computational resources for niche areas like computational biology, high throughputs, or data science uh, with GPUs. But infrastructure is not all of it. So the, the key thing is to take advantage of all this infrastructure is to have the expertise and the consultancy, the education and training, all the services that comes with it. Uh, and all of that comes with the experts in the scientific domain as well as in computers. Uh, so we try to build this community, uh, mostly focusing on the kingdom, but on the, on the region. Uh, and we try to provide those services thanks to a large team of scientists that I will share with you. So today is one of these manifestation of reaching out and training, providing these services. And we will explain today how, what are our infrastructure, but also how you can get in, how you can get access to these systems, uh, how to run jobs to, to these systems. And then you, you can see the whole workflows going on in sample examples. Uh, those vast uh, ranging from computational chemistry quantum chemistry like VASP or computational fluid dynamics so those are the two common examples then we move on to people who are really doing their own codes programming, debugging the filing best practices and tips on 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 this area we will close by q a uh, i everybody to keep asking questions on the chat box uh, the whole team is uh, replying to those questions and most often and most uh, frequently asked questions uh, we will tackle them again orally at the end of the session uh, stick to the end we will have a quick surprise nice video about Shaheen too uh, and uh, I think you will all enjoy it um, so this is the team today uh, that that one of scientists but we also have uh, one of the user support uh, specialist, uh, Wujden, uh, with us today, who will be helping us and answering also the Arabic questions, if, if there are any. Um, so I'm leading this team, wonderful team of scientists, uh, all in different scientific areas from computational fluid dynamics, Dr. Rohram, uh, Dr. Ziong on computational chemistry, Bilal, Dr. Sam and Dr. Bilal are and Dr. Mohsen are in computer science uh, and applied mathematics, uh, and they have a vast uh, experiences uh, in, in the area. Uh, all this team coming from very prestigious uh, institutions before, such as uh, EPFL, NCSA, uh, EDF, Oak Ridge National Lab, and Powell's Supercomputing Centers. 
and we are really fortunate to have this team uh, with us today. Uh, all now at KAUST and supporting this leadership supercomputer, Shaheen. So what is Shaheen? So we come to this uh, phase where we need to understand what we have and how we can use it today. So any supercomputer in terms of very high level abstraction of, of supercomputing architecture, uh, you see that it, it's slightly different from a typical computer. You have the compute part, which is the first, the, the, the middle, Part where we have thousands and thousands of cores and CPUs uh, and processing units. Okay, those are what we call the compute nodes. Uh, the storage is actually network attached, typically on those systems. Uh, that is different from uh, typical computers, uh, mainly because it's very large installations and you thousands of that, uh, and the performance and bandwidth that you have with that. So the way users interact, as you can see in the left corner of this graph, uh, is using some nodes that we call login nodes or login compute nodes. Uh, you, you can log to this node, the computer, with the supercomputer using something software that we call a scheduler. All right, uh, for data movements, you have some uh, various servers such as data mover or the globus or other uh, services that you can use to get data in and out of this. All right, that's the very high level. So we'll dig in into the details of Shaheen. Uh, so the compute part of Shaheen is a, a 6,000 plus nodes, nearly 200,000 cores. Uh, each node has 128 gig of memory and consumes actually three megawatts of power that generates a lot of heat and then it needs to be cooled using water. Uh, so the way we measure the computational performance of, of those 200,000 cores is using a benchmark called DIMPAC. And so if we run this benchmark, we reach a 5.5 quadrillion floating point operation or operation per second. We call it 5.5 petaflops. And that ranked us in the world as ranked seven when we started operation of Shaheen in 2015. But what makes it a supercomputer really is the interconnect that glue all these cores together using the Cray Aries interconnect, which is very, very fast, a very modern uh, supercomputing network. And that allows all these cores to work together to tackle the most challenging problem in science and in simulation and in, in modeling, uh, in, including examples of the world records with Aramco on reservoir modeling or seismic imaging or uh, gravity separation. So moving on to the storage, we have a 17 petabyte of storage, but what makes it really useful is that it has a very, very fast bandwidth, up to 500 gigabytes per second. And that allows users to read and write very, very fast, a large amount of data. Even that it might not be sufficient for some of the workloads. So we have a burst buffer technology based on solid state drives, and that allows even triple the performance of that. So let's dig in a little bit. Uh, I will give a little bit uh, more details on the compute. So the blade of, of the supercomputer has four computing nodes, all connected to the ARIES interconnect. It's a chip at the end of a backplane of the blades, and that connects all the, uh, the compute nodes all together at three different level, layers. Uh, the network has the rank zero and the backplane that connects uh, blades, all the blades within a chassis, in all to all fashion. And then you, all to all fashion, you glue all the chassis within two racks, what we call a, a two cabinets group. Uh, and you can see the cabling, it's just amazing. Um, and, and that make a second layer of all to all with copper, which, which is cheaper, but also quite performant at a short range. Now we move on to connecting all the groups. We have 18 groups of two cabinets, 36 cabinets in Shaheen, and that's using fiber optics. And the cool part of that is that uh, the performance is not only great because of the fiber optics and all the rich uh, topology of all-to-all, multi-layer all-to-all, but also using the adaptive routing, uh, which is one of the main features that allow to avoid congestion in the network, a problem very often seen in many other supercomputing that we don't have on Shaheen. Now, moving on to the storage, we have a, a large parallel file systems. That's only one cabinet. We have so many of those 
actually we have 144 uh, OST or the storage unit, uh, what we call a storage unit, and that makes our scratching project. And you will see that terminology of slash project slash scratch as we move on with the training and some examples. Lastly, but not least, uh, is uh, we have a pre and post processing system that we call Nessep. Uh, those are few nodes, uh, I think 19 exactly, but some of those have actually very large memory. So when we have some of the pre post processing, such as creating a mesh or trying to visualize very large data, you would like to use a, a system with very large memory up to 768 gigabytes. Uh, and those, the advantage of those is that it's tightly interconnected to the parallel file system of Shaheen, which means it allows the users to read those data very, very fast and write the output uh, with the same speed. So uh, that concludes my part and uh, I uh, welcome your questions within the chat. And now I move on to the next part with Bilal on how to use uh, and how to get access to the Shaheen.